So, I bet you've not seen one of these before. This is an Alcro Bylight, made in Italy. This one is a 1994 model. One of only either 200 produced or 200 imported to the UK. It's quite a quirky little thing. I'm going to show you around some of it now. I imagine it's going to be a terrifying ride, but this particular one doesn't run yet. So we're going to work on that today as well. The first thing about it is the drive system. Now, this bike weighs 20 kilograms altogether, 8 kilograms of it if it's engine, and the engine block is basically the whole lot. So the exhaust is attached only to the engine, and this whole transmission system here, and it's cog drive onto this rear wheel. Both wheels are plastic to keep the weight down. But yeah, it's got a very strange cog drive system that I've not seen before. Despite being bicycle derived, it does have drum brakes. But, I mean, that is tiny. For comparison, look, there's my hand. And also, this flimsy little thing here is the brake stay. So, if it pops out of there, you're going to wrap your brakes around. This bike does have other random party tricks as well. The main one being that it's entirely foldable, so the handlebars come off with this one clip. You've got a sealable breather on the petrol tank so that it doesn't uh, leak fuel all over your car. And then it comes apart at this hinge like a chauffeur bike. The seat also is quick release and you can remove the pedals with R clips that go through here which mine doesn't have fitted but you get the idea it's a chain drive bicycle on the other side you can ride it as a bicycle by disengaging this here this is in bicycle mode and then you can push that in uh, to engage the engine drive it's got a Delorto 12mm carb a lot of parts of it are sort of standard. I think it's a Bernardi engine. There's the writing on the side. But there's a lot of plastic involved. It's a strange little beast, this one. Telescopic forks at the front, even though they don't seem to actually telescope very much, so I'm wondering if it's just rigid forks with gaiters on. And it came without indicators from the factory which, bearing in mind, there have been a requirement since 1986, is a little bit odd. But the flexor we've been working on has also passed an MOT without indicators, and that's a 2004, so no idea. This, I think, was only on the road for a year uh, from new, and since then it's been languishing around. It seems like it's going to be quite a rickety thing to ride, which I'm quite enjoying the idea of, uh, and it does need a bit of love, like... You know, this rear light's got a hole in it. There's electrical stuff going on that I don't understand. Yeah, very, very rare bike. I'll show you what it looks like folded now. So, the Alcro Bylight has a no spark condition. Normally, I would go in, I assume that might be the ignition, or it might be on the other side, uh, behind the transmission, I'm not entirely sure. But before I faff about with that, I mean, this gaffer tape situation doesn't look very good. I also don't like the look of the connection. Oh, that is metal. Okay. Still, though, it doesn't look very secure in there, does it? in the HT plug cap. So I'm going to try and peel all this crap off here and see what we've got underneath. Right, so we've got through most of the gaffer tape anyway, which obviously doesn't offer particularly good insulation. Um, so it could have been shorting out against the frame. There's also 
I mean, it's, it is quite well twisted together, but I don't really like that. I would, and still might, take it down to the ignition uh, and try and solder a new HT lead on, because unfortunately it's um, an internal coil. It's not one of the ones with an exciter coil on the inside and a um, high-tension coil on the outside. It's all on the inside. But I don't have any of this thin HT lead. So I'd have to probably get some, um, because that little hole there probably isn't big enough for this fatter HT lead. So I'm going to see if I can improve this joint a little bit and insulate it better, get rid of the rest of that gaffer tape, um, and then maybe try a different plug cap. I'm not sure about that yet. We'll try it with that plug cap and then work from there. There we are, I've spliced them together a bit better and used heat shrink. I still aren't holding out a huge amount of hope, but at least it'll be proof of concept if it does uh, spark. So now the fun bit. sort the stand before that though. Here's a plan. I have one of these plug caps that lights up when a spark is present. So if I get my snips and cut the old one off, we'll know, won't we? Maybe I should try and sort out the wiring then. First, before that, I'm going to sort out the stand. So here's the stand, as you can see it's bent well out of shape, especially the ends there, but look at that, that's supposed to be straight, so I've got some work to do. Right, so I managed to get it a bit straighter, uh, there's a little ball bearing in there as well, which I assume is like a detent type thing, but yeah, so we're going to put it back in now. See if I can set you up somewhere. Yeah. I wonder if this tab is also bent, actually. I might try and bend that down a little bit.
Yeah, so that ball bearing's spring loaded, I think. So you have to push against it to line up the hole. That sounds like the council are brush cutting on the lane or cutting the hedge, so this is going to be noisy. I don't know if you saw, but the bike was leaning right over before. Now it's a lot more kind of vertical, which is brilliant. Possibly slightly more likely to fall over. But yeah, it's, uh, I would call that a success, I think. Right, so there is the bike, far more vertical. You can see the stand has to be quite far forward, otherwise, if you have it, where I'd have expected it to be resting naturally and it's too far and the bike falls over. Uh, I'm still not keen on that stand, it's very thin, it feels like aluminium, it's very bendable. But as long as it's keeping it up for now, it's a start and it's not like you need to start it on the stand anyway because it's not a centre stand, so the back wheel's on the floor anyhow. Uh, right, back on with the wiring I suppose. Right, so I think the ignition wiring is behind the transmission, which on this is particularly bonkers with the whole cog drive situation. I'm worried there's going to be irreplaceable, hard to find springs and stuff that pop out of here or won't go back together again, and then you know I'm never going to find another one, am I? So I'm very worried about it, but as far as I can tell, one, two, three four allen bolts and we'll get into this thing wish me luck that one feels like it's got a nut on the other side weirdly So the back one is also an engine mount, now the whole lot moves. This is bonkers, maybe I'll be better just taking the engine off. In fact, I probably would. What the fucking turns? Right, okay, recap, update rather. So, here's an update. So far, I've undone that one screw there, which causes the engine to pivot. The whole engine and transmission now pivots on there. So I'm thinking, there's two wires come out of the engine. That's the only one that's connected anyway. Then there's the throttle and the um, decomp and that screw, and that's all that's holding the engine on, there's no chain or anything. So it would make a lot more sense for me just to undo that bolt there, take the engine off and work on it at a table. So that is the plan. I can't get over the fact that the whole thing is held on by one bolt, and then that there, this bolt is too long for the housing, so it sticks out into that slot and acts as like a locator pin, so there wasn't a nut on the end of there, that just stops it from doing that. Absolute insanity. So I think now it's just that bolt with the nut removed and the decomp holding it on. I'm going to try and work something out with the decomp. But for now, let's see if we can get this bolt out. sort of interferes with the pedal guard on the back a little bit, but I've got it.
okay. One engine. So I was a bit worried about taking that obviously incorrect cable nipple off there because it's so frayed on the ends, but it looks like that's the only way I'm going to get it off there. And other than that, we have the whole engine complete unit. So I need both hands for that. I'll take that off and we'll have a better look at it. So that's about it for this video. In the next one, we'll be having a look underneath this cover at the transmission and ignition. But that won't be for about another two weeks. So if you need a bit more UK moped content between now and then, check out Vintage Moped's channel. He puts out a few more videos than I do, so you should have a couple to tide you over between now and when my next one comes out. In the meantime, have fun, and I'll see you later.